This video will explain how many buildings constructed with split face block have been deteriorating as a result of water intrusion and entrapment. This is a cross section of a parapet wall on a brand new split face block building with a traditional metal coping on top. Under the metal coping is a 2x8 piece of lumber. This is a single wall or single white construction and not a construction method I endorse. It is, however, a method used quite frequently. When finished, most split face block buildings have a thick coat of water sealant on the exterior to help protect it from the elements. Our harsh Chicago weather quickly erodes sealants and forces moisture into the porous concrete block and mortar. Driving rain, heavy winds, and snow soak the building and wear off the sealant sometimes in as little as five years. Before long, the building begins to absorb water. The mortar and concrete blocks become saturated. In the winter, the moisture freezes. As the water expands, it creates fissures in the concrete, which allows even more water intrusion in the spring when heavy rains fall. During hot, humid summers, some moisture evaporates through the exterior of the wall, but most is trapped in the block's hollow core or migrates toward the interior of the building. Basic physics and a phenomenon known as solar drive forces moisture to travel from hot areas to cool areas, like the air-conditioned building interior. If the building has capstones on top instead of metal copings, the problem is multiplied tenfold. While capstones look great, they are extremely porous. If they are not flashed properly, capstones allow a great deal of water directly into the wall. Capstones are made of many different substances, but limestone and renaissance stone are the most common. Water meanders through limestone, soaking the entire stone before dripping into the walls. Renaissance stone is actually just manufactured concrete. A heavy rain pounding on Renaissance stone will pour into the wall quickly. Let's talk basic physics. Water trapped inside the wall travels from wet to dry, just like a paper towel touching a spill. Dry concrete and mortar attract liquid and absorb it. Once the water starts traveling through the wall, it will absorb into anything naturally absorbent. The plywood roof decking, the roof insulation, the wood joists, and framing studs. There's nowhere else for the moisture to go. It circulates through the wall core to the metal coping or flashing and capstone and back down into the wall. When a metal coping is anchored by a 2x8, the moisture eventually rots the lumber away and mold spores start circulating within the wall core. Eventually, water settles into the wood joists and begins to work its magic there, forming mold which eventually starts rotting away the cellulose. If you're lucky, water will start to pool under the joist and a leak will alert you to the problem before it becomes expensive and potentially dangerous. If you're slightly less fortunate, water may start leaking from electrical outlets on exterior walls, which is, as you can imagine, potentially dangerous, especially if you have a toddler in the home. Or your nose alerts you to mold and rot somewhere in your building. Once water migrates from the concrete block to the framing studs, whether the studs are steel or wood, the insulation in the walls will become saturated and mold will begin to grow. All buildings have mold, it's just a fact of life. However, this never-ending influx of moisture into the wall cavity can cause a great deal of mold to form, which can cause respiratory illness and allergies. Mold colonies can be forming in the wall cavity for years before you notice any mold on the face of the drywall. If the drywall on an exterior wall seems less than sturdy, gives when you push on it, or feels wet to the touch, call a home inspector immediately. Once a building is thoroughly saturated, remediation, which includes the removal and replacement of drywall, insulation, and sometimes framing studs, may be necessary. Now it's time to solve the problem. With proper protection and ventilation using an appropriate Wickwright vapor release system. Visit wickwright.com for more information. To schedule an initial assessment of your building, Call 312-720-1467.